So Max, thank you so much for being willing to take time out of your busy day to, to do this interview for us. We really appreciate it. So let me jump right in. Um, as you know, the transition of the US federal government is a massive undertaking with 4 million employees in place and a $3.8 trillion budget. What do you see as some of the major issues in terms of transition? The handoff of power, something that we learn of as kids is the hallmark of our democracy, uh, is a moment of both um, incredible uh, uh, you know, power in the sense that it's a representation of our democratic practice, but also of remarkable vulnerability. And the transition is a time in which um, we present to the world, I think, a, an opportunity for, for mischief. Uh, and sometimes the world presents that mischief even if it's not deliberate, as in the last transition in which we had the economic meltdown. But um, it's vital for the handoff to power to be done in a safe, effective, and comprehensive fashion. And to date, that has never really happened. So you mentioned the transition from uh, George W. Bush to President Obama. And that transition um, was well prepared for and was actually known as one of the best transitions to date. But still, I think your view is there were many gaps. What, what's your perspective on that? The transition and the outgoing work that the Bush administration did in turning over power to the Obama uh, team coming in was the best that had been done ever uh, in history. Um, but it was a low bar, I mean, to be blunt about it. And uh, in a world that's become increasingly complex and dangerous, um, that low bar is, is a big problem. Uh, so you have a lot of issues that are presented. You have um, clearly the need to, as you said earlier, you've got four million uh, civilian or military personnel in the government that are career. And then you have 4,000 uh, political appointees that sit on top and run uh, the various organizations in government, and those all turn over in a transition. You have uh, literally hundreds of different organizations that have to be understood and operated by the new team coming in. You have budgets that are coming at you fast and furious. And on the personnel side, um, because you have to put nearly 1,100 of those 4,000 through a confirmation process by the Senate, um, what that means is that the new team coming in not only has to identify great people, put together good teams, to do that in a very short uh, time cycle, but they have to persuade uh, the Senate to uh, allow those people through and into jobs. So you mentioned it's about putting great people in the most important positions, but you've also talked about it's not only that. There's a, a series of activities that have to go on beyond sort of the people piece. Can you describe some of those activities that have to happen in transition? You have your, in essence, your due diligence process to understand you know, what exactly is going on in the various different agencies. So um, there are uh, you know, time sensitive issues that are going to present to the new team that have to be understood. Good example um, of you know, large you know, political salience when the Obama team came in, it's the same time in which the uh, transition from uh, analog to digital TV was going to take place. So new Obama administration needed to understand that that transition was taking place. The last thing they needed was, you know, uh, you know, hundreds of millions of Americans not getting their TV. But, but realistically, that was a, a real issue. Um, multiply that by a thousand and you've got some sense of the scale and, and set of issues that a new team coming in today will have to face. Some of those are predictable. A lot of them aren't. And, you know, the Obama administration came in with a lot of big plans to do a lot of stuff. and Virtually none of it had to deal with the economy, but obviously that's you know became front and center not by choice but by you know the world you know throwing that curveball at them. The partnership's been critical in terms of passing some legislation which is going to improve the transition process. Can you describe that? We've been successful now in getting three primary pieces of legislation passed regarding the transition. Uh, the first was in 2010, and it did something in one sense very simple but also very powerful, and it moved the date of support for transition planning uh, from what had historically been uh, in the election. So the day after the election, the president-elect would get a bunch of support from the government to, uh, to you know, actually engage in transition work, uh, to the convention. And the goal for that was really to um, lengthen the runway for uh, campaigns to actually focus on transitions longer than historically had been done. Second piece of legislation, uh, which was passed in 2012, reduce the number of Senate confirmed positions. So as I mentioned earlier, that's one of the big uh, obstacles for any incoming team is the difficulty of getting their core people through the Senate. And this legislation essentially reduced that number by about 10%. And then the last piece of legislation just got passed a couple of months ago, March of this year, 
and it was focused on the responsibilities of the outgoing administration uh, to make for an orderly handoff to the new folks coming in and again provides for a lot of very common sense but very important uh, activities that the outgoing needs to do to help the incoming uh, come in very effectively. Today is a, a period of particular divisiveness in terms of politics. Do you think that will in any way hinder or influence the transition or, or not necessarily? What's amazing about this area is that we have found uh, incredible goodwill uh, even, in the, even in that challenging partisan atmosphere. And so, uh, you know, great example of that is um, we have now for three cycles brought uh, the relevant parties together uh, in the midst of the campaigns uh, to talk about and to help them uh, prepare adequately on the transition activity. In this last go around when we brought folks together in April, we had five campaigns, you know, uh, Cruz and Kasich and Trump and Clinton and Sanders with folks from the Obama White House, uh, with people from the Romney readiness team and Bush uh, alums, all in one room for a day and a half. And it was incredibly collaborative uh, and uh, constructive. Well, Max, thank you so much for everything that you're doing and the partnerships doing to make the transition um, successful. And um, I know it's gonna pay great dividends in, in terms of the governing of the United States. We couldn't be doing what we're doing without BCG's help, and uh, it means a lot, so thank you.